Hello, and welcome to another episode of Tech Talk with Tony. Today, we're going to take a little bit of a diversion from our regular uh, building of anti-cookie cutter guns and move a little bit back in time to the DMC's era. Uh, the challenge was to make a gun that is just as good, if not better, than the guns out on the market today. Now, if you guys will take a look with us, we think we've come pretty close. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Viper DMC. First thing you'll probably notice is it looks unlike any DMC you've probably seen in the past. Um, the reason being is we actually removed the plastic body that encased this beautiful marker. Revealing the snakeskin-like texture of the body that was hidden by the bulbous plastic shell. This gun was developed and designed for Aaron Tholey's personal collection. Um, there is no intent or plan to have this leave his possession, um, so we really went all out with this marker. You'll notice right away it's Aaron's favorite color, um, gloss black. We did this gun as a tribute to the dye markers that were made in the United States and that shoot tremendously well. Not only does this gun look tremendously different from a traditional DMC, but it also weighs substantially less. This gun actually clocks in at a weight under what the DM6 weighs, um, and that is including the non ultralight frame. Another thing you guys will probably notice right off the bat is the top of the gun looks way different than any of the old style DM markers from back in the day. The reason we did this is to fit a more traditional contemporary feed neck on there. Um, just because you, for the, the rate of fire that we're shooting nowadays, you don't need that tall ball stack and um, it makes the gun actually playable. DM5s and DM4s are traditionally too large in today's standards to play with. Whereas this marker, we've taken off of enough meat Whereas this marker, we've taken off enough meat to make it usable on today's speedball field. Now, one of the defining features on this marker, as you've probably noticed, are the horns on the back of this gun. Now, this is also why we called it the Viper. We looked at the gun, we said it has snake skin, and it also has two ears, or horns, very similar to that of the Horned Viper. Now, with the DM5 platform, they were very enthralled with 3D milling. Um, there were a couple cool things about that. They can make really sweet looking guns. They could add a lot of really unique and different shapes to their markers. But the thing that they were considering was the substantial amount of aluminum they were adding to these guns. So we cut off the whole top bulbous metal piece and um, removed around five ounces of material. To make the gun more ergonomically pleasing, we milled down the front on-off knob so it's flush with the body and more comfortable and easy to hold. Now drawing your attention to the rear of the marker, you'll see that there is a V milled into the top. Now some of us might not be able to figure out what that V could possibly stand for. Vern? Uh, yeah, Vern, um, Victor, Vagabond, uh, Vagabond uh, Vintage maybe, or what's that word? Oh yeah, Viper. Viper. Now we're going to talk about the internal modifications to this marker. Among hand fitting all the O-rings, we used 50 durometer all rings on the inside of this gun, which give it a more than smooth bolt action, and we are allowed to run our LPR at one and a half turns out with no velocity shoot down or any issues like that. Um, we also did what's called the 420 mod on the back cap of this gun, and we removed two of the pillars for increased airflow and increased volume. Now, there are more mods out there that we could have done to this marker, but when we're dealing with guns that shoot this well right off the bat, we really try not to do too much to them just to maintain their integrity and not have to deal with any goofy issues that come up later on. Part of that is just knowing paintball markers and uh, not fixing things that aren't broken. So that wraps up the majority of the Viper. Now with most things in the world, you can't get a great just for how cool something is by just watching a video on it. Um, getting it in your hands is the best way to see how much detail and effort goes into something. Um, now with this gun being part of Aaron's personal collection, it should be here at the store pretty much all the time. So if you ever want to stop in, um, just make sure to ask somebody and we'll more than likely be happy to show it to you.